All right, so the girls is here. We are here We're about to get to know in a day from NLM Garments. Stay tuned for Fashley Dating Makara. All right, we are here. I know I'm like two minutes late, well, four minutes late, but the girls had an important phone call. So we are here. Another episode of Fashionably Dating Makara. I'm so excited. Let me tell her I'm on because I did tell her I am I was going to be late. She did. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, girl. I hope you guys enjoyed the previous week with Isaiah, Isayla, and also the brand Tijan Lace. I'm very excited to definitely go and see um, that collection in DC. I hope y'all. I hope y'all are there. I hope y'all gonna be there too. Let me see if she got some. All right, hey girl. All right, did we get it? My Instagram always doing, always acting up. Are we? Are we all right, we got it. You think? Wait, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Cause my ins listen, my Instagram be acting all types of crazy. <laughs> Child. Well, hello. Well, hey, girl. How you doing? I'm really good. How are you? Ooh, it's hot outside, but yes. I'm a chocolate milk dud, okay? Yeah, it's yeah. pretty hot here too. So summer has arrived. Is it? <laughs> How hot is it over there? Well, well, um, in Celsius, it's like twenty. I think it's like twenty six today. I don't know how much that is in Fahrenheit, but it's hot. I think it's more humid in Canada, okay. right? Probably. Um, it depends it's really on the day. Hot. Today is okay. humid. Yeah, it's been hot and like sunny both. Like I feel like I'm still living in Miami, but I'm not. It's oh, okay. it's hot and it's been like a hundred degrees, ninety degrees, ninety two degrees. Okay. It's been yeah. like consecutive. Oh gosh. So That's really can... hot, right? I don't yeah, know what it's... ninety two is. <laughs> oh, it's hot, girl. It's close. It's it's just hot. It's just hot and girl, you gonna fry. But yeah, right now Welcome to fashion we're just like humid. Uh -huh. It's a little like overcast, but it's kind of hit or miss in Toronto. So no, well, it's been consistent. It's too hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet I know. You guys get really great weather down in America. Our weather is like all over the place. <laughs> it depends what part of America you're in. It depends. It depends. <laughs> right, okay. but. Hey y'all, welcome to Fashionly Dating Makara, where I get to know fashion designers beyond the look. And this week, we have Nade of NLM Garments. Woo! Hey girl! Hello, how you doing? Man, I'm nice and moisturized, and yeah, I'm full. I had a nice little food beforehand, so yeah, I'm full. Oh, good. When I just eat, I'm real good. When it's like I'm empty on my stomach, I'm like, oh, no, girl, hurry this up. I got you. I feel you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so let's get into getting to know okay. the day. Hey, girl. Yes. So everyone has their own special stories on how they got into fashion or introduced to fashion. How did you get into fashion? Like, what was your it's what was your introduction story into fashion? Like, as a whole, like yeah, from as the a very whole, like the first, the very beginning. 
Okay, so it starts in childhood. Okay. My mom was a seamstress. She worked mm. in a denim factory. So she knew a thing or two about the sewing and the stitchery and this and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was a kid, I I remember very vividly, like I was maybe like four years old. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting this like make-believe sewing machine mm -hmm. as a Christmas gift. And man, I tell you, the one problem I had with this machine mm -hmm. is that it would make believe. It didn't really sew. It didn't actually sew. It just uh -huh. like made the noises and, and did the thing, but it didn't actually sew because it was just a toy for kids. Right. But I remember like sitting there and like just pretending with myself, trying to sew, trying to do this, trying to do that. But um, my mom actually, she was the one who taught me how to sew, how to hand stitch, how to make clothes by hand, how to mend things. And it was just from there, this kind of like obsession with the fact that you could take a piece of fabric, right. a huge rectangle, no matter how big, no matter how small, mm -hmm. and you can make it into virtually anything. You could right. make it into a hat, socks, a bag, a pair of shoes. You could make it into a vest, a coat, mm -hmm. shorts, a pants, a skirt, a dress, anything. And my mind just like exploded from that point on. And that's just kind of how I got introduced to fashion and design right. and and making clothes but it well, I didn't really start like designing as in like drawing mm -hmm. and stuff until I was in grade seven the seventh grade okay. and I had this art teacher and she gave me this what we would call like a croquis like it's a form like a, just a figure of like the female mm -hmm. form mm -hmm. and she did not give this to anybody else and to this day I will never know why but she comes to me she tells me goes she goes Nate, you know you could like use this like template and you could draw like clothing on it and from the first time i made my first little like janky illustration <laughs> my whole world like i became a designer in that moment and i i, I was set on this path and i never veered off since well, so good for you yeah good for you yeah. So did you, since then, have you had any expectations when you got into the fashion, the business of fashion? Absolutely. So when I launched the brand, my namesake brand, the De Laura Marmot in 2020, mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to make a little website and a little Instagram. I'll do, you know, fashion week and everything's going to pop up. Everything's going to be great. And that wasn't the case. Although I'm happy that I had that like, you know, naivety going right. into it. I was very faithful and I still am. But the reality is more like there's so much work that goes into building a fashion brand that is very different from building any other type of business. You know, right. I see a lot of people doing like the drop shipping thing on Amazon. They like Ciao. have these little gadgets and gizmos mm -hmm. to sell and those mm -hmm. products they do sell themselves but when you're talking about not even just a clothing company but a fashion brand where you're you're creating new designs you know i'm not just here doing graphic tees and nothing wrong with the graphic tee people but a clothing company uh, and a fashion brand highly do, skilled garment yeah. maker it yeah. takes time it's very different so what I've realized is that people buy the name before they buy the garments. So right now, my, my, my expectation at the time was never like, oh, like I need to be out there. People need to know who I am. I wasn't really thinking about that. I thought if I could make just really beautiful garments that were well-made, you know, people would flock. But people want the name. They want to know who, what is NLM? what is this name what is this logo what is this brand because people you know it's psychology mm -hmm. and understanding the psychology of, of retail right. psychology is very important right. too so i think the big wake-up call was realizing there was a lot more work than i could have ever of imagined mm -hmm. Fat. 
I want to I want to point out to everyone who else watches this, who's watching this now or watching the replay. But you notice how there's a pattern that everyone said they wanted to make their collection and then they don't do a, a runway show. They want to do their <laughs> website and then, bam, everyone's gonna buy. And I'm you noticing how everyone's saying this. this similar things but it's just like okay where's my customers like the last designer said Aisha said last week but it's hard work you got to get out there you gotta it's in digital media like the way they're controlling this freaking out al these algorithms she was just Christ I was like child I'm about to start getting out there in these streets and that's exactly what I've been doing but yeah that's right but you know what it is also a labor of love because i see what i do as like this is my career this is my life i wouldn't be doing right. anything else so even though there have been bumps in the road and whatnot mm -hmm. that's just part of the story like everything that's happening it's like my autobiography that's just unfolding and mm -hmm. in 40 years time we're gonna be writing in the book oh you know i was when i was uh first starting off the brand it was like this and it was like that mm -hmm. it's all part of the story so there's no part of it where i'm like it, that frustrates me right i just go okay let's just reassess let's see how we can make this better how we can move forward because there's no other option there's no option to quit there's no option to wrap it up we're just gonna keep on keeping on on this on this road right some of the greatest designers did not even start like popping off or designing until like after I'm gonna say 32, like roughly. Yeah. But a lot of them was like in their later part of their 30s. Yep. So figure it out in 20. You know what I tell anyone: do any and everything in your 20s, do all the fuck ups, and then like in your 30s, you'll be like, okay, in my 20s, I did all this. Yeah. Now I can kind of reflect and like kind of just hone in on what I feel like more secure in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So how so how's life been after New York Fashion Week? <laughs> it's been great. It's been great. I'm so glad I did it because the amount of connections that I've made are just phenomenal even like like connections with you connections with photographers in new york around the world other publications just like kind of building up my rolodex of people who i can like always call upon for like business connects and business collaborations and opportunities has been so invaluable and but more so is that i actually decided to go back to school to get my um diploma in fashion design so you guys would call it like community college we call it college here like you know the two-year oh, yeah. college yes yeah. so i did that and mm -hmm. i finished and then now i'm in university getting my uh bachelor's of design in fashion okay and yeah and the reason why i want to do that is because i'm already like the artist designer that's all good and great you know you're kind of born with these things god gives us right. these gifts but I know that I want to be the best designer that I could be. And going to school doesn't make you a designer, but it definitely, just like you were just saying, hones in your skills. I'm here in university to be the best pattern maker, to be the best illustrator, to be the best mm -hmm. sewer, to be the best designer so that I can make the best garments that I can possibly make. Let me tell y'all something. The pattern pattern makers, y'all y'all can get all the applause. That is too much work <laughs> and too much magic for my black ass. Okay, I only do yeah. I buy little simple little patterns off of Etsy. I know how to sew and stuff, but yeah, doing drafting and doing yeah. your own and I don't know <laughs> where are you? How much do you want? I wanted to stop right here and yeah yeah pattern making is too much yeah. for me yeah and that's the thing like the pattern drafting there's really a lot less artistic stuff to it it's all it's like all technical mm -hmm. these are all technical skills that you really have someone has to teach you they have to show you and and so that's one thing that i really want to hone i don't just want to be listen a lot of people call themselves designers but they're really illustrators. They're 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 really good at the illustrating. They're really good at the drawing. Right. They're really good at the painting. But when it comes to actually making the garment, making your pattern, cutting, sewing, finishing, putting your buttons on, like 
making something gorgeous, making something wearable, making something comfortable. Can you bend in it? Can you sit in it? How are you going to go in the wash? Yes. All of these yes. little things. You know what I'm trying to say? These are technical mm -hmm. skills that school teaches you. So, yeah, school is important, kids. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, it's too much math for me. I'm like, <laughs> no, girl, take it. I don't want it. Call me when you're done, and we will do the test. But yeah, yeah. no. Try to make a job. Y'all can have that job. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned school. You go to school. You mentioned that to me as well. But like, what's life outside of your brand? What is Nade? What does she do? What kind of girl is she? Oh, you know, Nade, she's the diva. Okay, oh, she, yes. yeah, well, <laughs> so, you know, I have my personal Instagram and it's actually, the handle is the diva does things because, you know um, what you do, ago, I will be on Instagram like that because they be flagging my account, oh, shoot, I don't be messing see? with them. Oh my god! I'm actually on t TikTok, it's kind of like where I'm, I know, I went over there, Oh, I finally gosh. went over there. I'm putting a lot of energy into yeah. my TikTok. I'm really trying to grow there. I, I see that the growth is like really um, mm -hmm. up on TikTok. But um, a very, very long time ago, I went on this vacation and these people saw me and they were like, this girl's so darn extra. She's a diva, she's a queen. And she get, they gave me that title. The, the full title really is the extra diva queen, but we've since shortened it since then to just the diva. So in my oh, regular God. life, I am a faith-filled person. I love the Lord, go to church every Sunday and all that stuff. I love spending time with my family. I'm out here waiting for my husband to come okay. and find me, to come, come and snatch me up. Okay, you, if, you, if you see her, okay, on Pinterest, YouTube, That's wherever right. I try to stuff at, okay? That's you have to right. say hello to him, wait for him. You know, because... I know you you have your American audience sometimes I feel like I don't know if my husband's like American because I love like that American swagger that vibe that y'all have is so cool and I love your crush I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna guess it's probably like someone's from the southern state you know it I could be because I'm very traditional too you know like I have a business and everything but I'm a very traditional woman but yeah I love you know all the hair makeup clothes you know you could always find me out and about with my friends with my sister just living life having so much fun i have this creative career that i'm in life doesn't have to be mundane life can be what you make right. it so i'm trying to make every single day a good day yeah okay so you are the girl that's always outside are you yeah okay you are the yeah i love her yeah, mo well, no, well, okay. It's like in, in doses, honestly. It's in small doses. Okay. I need to come back home to like recharge. But when I'm out, she's out. Okay, oh, no. full energy, oh, no. always on, mm -hmm. always like don't leave the house without a face on, you know, some sort of heel, even mm -hmm. if it's, you know, a short heel, some sort of high heel. <laughs> you know, I'm that person that people go like, where are you going? Why are you always dressed up? Right. Like, I don't know, this is what it is. Oh. We just got to be dressed oh. up. <laughs> okay. Come on today. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say your core values are as a fashion designer? Absolutely. So um, it is number one, creating garments that are truly sustainable. This word sustainability gets thrown around every which way you Girl, go. You're and watching my last video. Oh, no, no, I didn't. I said the same oh. thing. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I said the same thing. Actually, true. It yes, gets thrown around. Oh, I hate it. Yeah, oh. it gets thrown around, and especially I I understand. You know, the fashion industry is a cause of a lot of pollution. Um, but that that's partly due to our buying habits. We tend to buy. Oh yeah, and social media. Social media, like all these hauls that are going on. I guess people have way too much money to be spending on clothes. Like, spend your money. Like, give some money to charity. Like, let, let's get serious. But, but my approach to sustainability is actually making garments that will last you longer than a lifetime. These are clothing that will you can pass down. These are potential heirlooms. They are clothing that are seasonless and mm -hmm. timeless. These are clothes like 
some of my garments you you won't even be able like if you didn't know that i just made them today you wouldn't even necessarily be able to pinpoint the decade right. that it's from that's my approach I make clothing for women who are, you know, on the younger side, mm -hmm. closer to our age, all the way up to 65. I, I, and that's even my approach to inclusivity, not just, oh, racial and all these like buzzwords that get right. thrown around. Like we're all people, every race of people should automatically be included. You don't mm -hmm. have to like, like go that extra bit to me. It's right. kind of like token giving, but I actually promote my garments with, to women like, who are even older i just i last year i did a campaign and i had a woman who was fully gray fully gray yes. hair beautiful gorgeous woman because that's to me inclusivity women who are older get left out all the oh, time, all time. Mm -hmm. and if you think about it by god's grace one day we're going to be older too so mm -hmm. i don't want to be left out so i'm not going to leave those women out right but in regards to sustainability like i also make clothing that um you no, I already said that. But yeah, it's gonna last you a long time. <laughs> I just be going on tangents because sometimes I'd be talking too much. But <laughs> the point is, is that the clothing will last you a long time. Mm -hmm. And they're well made. They're made with the highest quality um, materials, all handmade stuff, mm -hmm. made here in Canada. And at, like so much attention and detail goes into each and every garment because mm -hmm. what I believe is that I am not only selling clothing, I am selling a piece of myself. Yes. I'm selling a piece of myself in every single garment. It's like a little bit of me, a little bit of my soul mm -hmm. goes along with it. So it has to be the best that I can make it be. Right. So, yeah. Good. Because, yeah, everyone throws in sustainability, let's say yeah. the urge. And I'm just like, well, girl, what does it mean? And then they kind of exactly. get choked up. And I'm just like... You're just an echo chamber, just That's echoing right. whatever you see online or what someone someone else say. You don't even have your own definition, but some people do. But it's just a lot of echo chambers, and I'm like, very true. True. <laughs> it gets old. It gets tired because it doesn't. It doesn't really mean anything anymore. It's just something to like put that. It's a stamp. keyword. It's a yeah. keyword so that they can be searched online yeah i think so i think mm -hmm. so yeah that's the name of the game nowadays i don't even get mad when people kind of like ask my ask me questions or like pick my brain because they're like everyone says the same thing and yeah. it's very refreshing to hear someone say or explain it other uh, other people just don't like explain they just kind of just dance around but not answer it well you so you know what too like all of the things that I'm doing, these are not things that I just like woke up one day and like decided to do. This whole like everything with my business and my brand, these are well baked, if you will, well baked ideas, well baked philosophies. All of our principles and our like goals or our um, core values, mm -hmm. these are things that mean something to me as a person right. so like i said that even every garment there's a little piece of me that goes with it all of my values as a person also go with each garment so mm -hmm. each one has to be made the best be truly sustainable it's going to last you a long time you wash you can wash it as many times as you like it's not going to you know wear and tear on you you know with all obviously with proper care it's not going to be something where in two years it's completely out of style. Mm -hmm. You can't wear this anymore. If you wear it, you know, it. you look dated, you know, like all the um, like m millennial like memes, like the girls with like the right. circle scarves and things like those are very dated items. Yeah. But yeah, you know, my approach is to make things that are actually timeless and classic mm -hmm. because classic is never going anywhere. No. Would you ever venture to men's fashion? Like Absolutely. Shooting? Okay. Absolutely. I'm like, I wonder, I, I wonder if she would make a couple of suits. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh -huh. And it's actually the question I get asked every single time. Mm -hmm. Every single time someone asks me, like, would you ever do men's? A lot of men ask that too. 
but if I do it, it's going to be something with a little bit of flair. It's definitely not going to be like a traditional, just like very stuffy. It will have wow. style. It will have flair. There's going to be pops of color. It will be classy. It will be elegant. It will be sophisticated. But it will definitely be like a wow suit. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're going to stand out if you wear it. And sometimes some men don't like to stand out. But a lot of men do. So for the men it's, who like to stand out, I've got something coming in the pipe for you. <laughs> it's definitely the time because you got a lot of sports. They're, they're covering sports. Yeah. They're including like a whole bunch of people and men just want to look good. You got yeah. social media, people just, wherever they are, people just pull out their phones and something can go viral. So I mean, yeah. now yeah. is the time to even try even a, a college person about to get drafted like you still can dress them up with your stuff on so i mean now is the time it, it's true it's so true right mm -hmm. yeah. so where did you get your name the name from nlm garments what does that stand for it's so it's my initials actually okay. of my name so my full name is nade laura marmon and so NLM is just my initials for my brand. Just, you know, keep it okay. simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. Okay. Yeah. I thought it meant, I'm like, what, what does this mean? Is this the my special? Maybe it's her grandma's initials. Oh, no, it's me. Okay. But you know, it's what's funny is that um, both my first name and my middle name, I, mm -hmm. they're actually from my, gra my first name is from my grandma mm -hmm. on my dad's side. And my middle name is, I'm named after my grandmother on my mother's side. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, you have any specific standards when making your apparel, your apparels? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, it first, we'll start with um, the fabric choice that I will choose. Mm -hmm. Um, depending on what it is, if it's a suit, like the one that I have behind me, um, I will choose for, let's say if it's for like a fall winter, mm -hmm. um, jacket, I will choose a fabric that is going to be 100% wool. I always mm -hmm. try to work with, um, natural materials as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that's in, even some people have a problem with even wool, but anyway, it's it's a yeah. natural material versus using plastics and polyester. Yeah. And um, I will always use something that has a significant like fabric weight to it. One thing I can't stand are fabrics that are just too light because it's like you rub that against something once, like it's, it's, it's finished, over. you know, exactly. Um, then the next step would be ensuring it comes down to the, the pattern making. Mm -hmm. There have been garments that I have made that I have made up to four or five samples mm -hmm. of that garment because I keep going back, well, you know, I don't really like this thing here. We could tighten it up here, or loosen it here, or lengthen mm -hmm. the sleeve here, you know, pick something there. And I'll just keep making the sample over and over and over again until I'm 100% happy with right. it. And I another thing is that in the sample making process, mm -hmm. I have a specific way that I even draft, like my collars are drafted a certain way, the, the, the shoulder length, the, mm -hmm. the sleeve cap height, how big my um, shoulder pads are. Mm -hmm. I do everything in a specific way. And what I have found is that it gives my garment a super, like just like really a unique look, like a Did we lose her? Oh, we lose we lost her. She'll come on back. Just technical difficulties, folks. We got it. Oh, Someone hello. Comes. Okay. You had hi. You froze. Oh, did, did I? Yes. Oh, no. Which part did I freeze you, at? You were talking about the Pacific pat the Pacific um patterns. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. The way you, the way, you, like the order that you um, create your garment. Oh, 
Yes, yes. So I was saying that even like how I um, draft like my collars and like mm -hmm. my shoulder and even like the sleeve cap height is done in a very specific way. Mm -hmm. And like at the end of the day, a suit is a suit. But I've had people tell me like in the day, like there is something just like different, that je ne sais quoi about your garments that it really makes them stand out. Um, so that all has to do with the design process of my garments. Right good old pattern making yes. okay yes. <laughs> yes that is good so how long does it take you to make a garment because you are actually a highly skilled garment maker and you do pattern making because some mm -hmm. designers do not do pattern making correct yeah but i honestly don't really understand that what do you mean like i don't understand like how they don't make patterns like what what are they doing no, like I'm I don't know. genuinely asking, like I'm asking you to tell me. <laughs> Child, I, I'm not a designer. I would be told, <laughs> I would coin myself a creative director, but yeah, no, I will never label myself a designer. No, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. I can rework clothes. Like, you know, if I grab this and I want to rework it, I mean, I'll do that. But like, yeah, no, I'm not. No, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. You already heard my thoughts on pattern making. I hear you, but I, okay, well, anyway, how long it takes to make, um, it depends. It depends on, like, how long the garment is. If it's, like, like a floor-length, like, blazer dress, like I have behind mm -hmm. me, it's a floor-length blazer dress. It's a um, double-breasted, so it's a lot more mm -hmm. fabric going on. Um, I, it depends. Depends. It could take anywhere from a month really? to e even up to six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it and it, then it would depend also, like if it's a custom piece, how many revisions that we do. Um, but to give you an average, I would say maybe I would say between yeah two and six months, depending on the garment, okay. depending on what, what's how in like intricate it is. Yeah. Okay. I don't. You know, I always wonder, like, how long does it take to make garments? And especially when you look at, like, celebrities, you know, they want, like, the over-the-top stuff. Where it's, like, 10,000 diamonds. Yeah. It it's just be a lot. And they're like, yeah, we spent, like, 100,000 hours or just a simple suit. Yeah. I just yeah. be wondering, like, man, what is the time frame? And this is why a lot of, like, celebrity styles will say, like, you need, like, a minimum six months if you yeah. are going to like an award if not like we're going to just have to pull and rent something but if you want something custom it needs to be like a minimum of six months that's true and then i mean also a lot of celebrities work with bigger brands who have teams of people they could have teams mm -hmm. of like 10 to 20 people so you know the time frame might look a little different but Right now, like I'm myself, like I do everything in my home. I work out of my home. So just being one person, yeah, it can take longer than I would like it to at times. <laughs> but it, to me, like it's okay. Most people that I work with are okay with the timeline. And I tell them upfront, like what to expect and like how many, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, if someone hasn't had a custom garment made before, I think what they might not be used to is the number of revisions it takes. Yeah. I think sometimes we might think like, oh, like I just sent my measurements over, like bada bing, bada boom, you should be able to like make me something. You should no, be like a glass. No. And it doesn't work like that, mm -hmm. you know, because um, when we make the garment, we have your measurements, your measurements are taken like in your three dimensional form. Mm -hmm. And then we take that and we put it into 2D onto flat onto the paper and then we take it back to 3D and in all those processes, you know, things are not always going to be perfect. Right. So I think um, for someone who might not have had a custom garment before, they might not be expecting, oh, like you have to like keep keep taking it in and here and there. Like, yeah, but trust me, by the end, it's going to be perfect. Fitting your body to a exactly team. yeah yeah exactly yeah. yeah the fabric needs to just sway on your body yeah. and it, yeah a lot of people just don't they just 
are used to the convenience of the store, the mat, yeah. like the mask. And it's like, no, with custom, it's fitting every portion of your body. Like if you have a long torso, it's yep. going to the way you want it to end, like that's the way it's going to end. You don't have to deal with whatever is going on when you buy from the store. But people are just like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't never realize that they yeah. take, they take stuff for granted. That's right. Come on with the, come on with the fashion <laughs> tea. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say? your similarities are with your collection that you released at New York Fashion Week and I'm gonna say your college portfolio yeah um I mean it's 100% very similar to me because um it's like if I could if, who I envision mm -hmm. myself to be like what would she wear the right. most confident woman the hottest the sexiest you know the most intelligent the mm -hmm. baddest chick what would she wear and then i kind of design like that and i go okay i'm trying to be her too like not just for you know the masses who are you know i'm also trying to be that girl so right. i design things in a way of like, okay, who would I want to be? How do I want to look? And like, what's the vibe that I'm trying to bring out there? And it's always going to be strong, classy, elegant, sexy, mm -hmm. all of those things, feminine, but also like modest in a way of like, I don't like to show garments that have a lot of skin. I really yeah. don't design things in that manner. I think actually to be kind of covered, Mm -hmm. and still be sexy like i think that that takes work you know right. you have to work for that it's not easy to do so yeah i totally relate to every piece that i make i i i would i wear all my pieces there's no piece that i would make that i wouldn't wear absolutely not yeah okay what would you say is the difference between your design from your new york fashion week and your college portfolio yeah. Yeah, I would say is definitely a more honed to the brand of what I'm trying to bring to the world um, in terms of like design aesthetic um, and just more cohesive than New York. New York was like my debut. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I, I didn't. And this is one thing that I did learn in school. We kind of learned how to like communicate your ideas a little better, mm -hmm. how to like, you know, think, yeah. How to like make things more cohesive, have a more cohesive theme, have things work together, ideas work together. In New York, the idea was to just have like a whole bunch of different suits. I didn't really care. They didn't have to like match in any kind of way. It was just, okay, they're all individual pieces. Whereas for in college, it was all, all worked together. I used all like the same fabrics and the same accent fabrics to have one cohesive collection that could be sold as one versus all right. different garments. And that's kind of even going into like, for retail buying, you want to have a collection that can be sold all together instead of like just individual pieces. Right. So that would be the right. biggest difference is that the college is more cohesive as a collection. Okay. Wow. It's time to get into our little physical attraction. So show us something from your, well, show us an item from your fashion wear and let the people know. Take it over, girl. Yes. Okay. Well, I have this garment right behind me. Let's see, can I move this up? This is, here we go. So we have got the, this was from my college um, year, my last year at college. And it's a double breasted floor length blazer dress. And it's got these beautiful puff sleeves and you can even see the detail here the buttons 
all hand done, all in the um, in the collar, as well as the lapel. We did all pad stitching, so hand done pad stitching. And pad stitching is a bespoke tailoring technique that okay. gives the structure to the lapel so that it stays nice and stiff, I, right? I'm about to say, um, girl, can you explain? Because I don't know what the <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what pad stitching I got is because and that that's what um has to do with also like the standard is that a lot of times um in fast fashion really to apply to get the structure in like your collar and like cuffs and whatnot they will use um glue or something called fusible interface and they use glue yes. and that glue stiffens up the fabric in places that you want it to be stiff but for my suits i do the old-fashioned way which is using um horsehair canvas oh, wow. and doing um a particular stitching it's called pad stitching mm -hmm. onto it and that's what gives it that's what gives it the shape so it holds it's shaped beautifully as well as on the lapel it holds its shape so it's double breasted as i said it's completely floor length and this was from my college final project at college yeah yes oh, how long did this take uh well you know this was a project so you kind of had to okay. you know be speedy about okay. it but um start to finish i think it took me i think i did it in like three weeks if i'm honest yeah because i had to you know make sure i got the deadline but if i was taking my time with it i would have probably used like two months to do it but i did it in three weeks nonetheless okay. okay would you say this is your most proudest item you've ever created yeah absolutely like okay absolutely right now it is because it embodies not only um the like my design aesthetic mm -hmm. but also the technical side and like there are certain things like on camera you can't really see all you can just see is a jacket but in person mm -hmm. you feel the weight of the this piece like it's it's heavy because of mm -hmm. the canvas that's inside of it you can see the stitching like on the button you can see like how the pocket is made there's pocket i always put pockets on every single one of my garments because it's 2024 mm -hmm. women need pockets um so i am just obsessed with all of the details and just how perfect it came out but this is actually also my hat too i also have a fedora collection a wide brim fedora mm -hmm. collection and i've got my logo on the side this is also made out of 100 percent australian wool that i am also extremely proud of mm -hmm. it is the first um piece that i have like for mm -hmm market so like i have a whole inventory set up like you can just order it have it shipped to your door you know and however long it takes to ship right. but um that was like because like you know being a student in school we do a lot of like one-offs mm -hmm. but this is a gar uh the hats are pieces that i have full inventory of that right. will stay you know for however long until we sell out and then reorder and that's like real business stuff so i'm very very proud of being able to kind of like do that and be like a real business and have sales i've got my website we've got mm -hmm. you know the shipping and the packaging and the, right. the you know shipping slips and everything so i'm very proud of that very much so yeah yes let me see who is trending we're gonna see we're gonna do we're gonna see who our little trendy person okay. is okay Amber Rose. Oh my goodness. Yes. So, so if you had to dress Amber Rose based on her love language, which I'm going to say, what, what, what love language am I going to choose? Um, smell. We're going to do smell. So if you had to dress Amber Rose based on a love language, which is smell, how would you dress her? L smell, like what is what is the love, love language of smell? The love language, 
So there is, I said smell. Oh my God, child. <laughs> <laughs> I am smelling aroma. No, okay. Scratch that. I'm bugging. Mm. You mean like physical touch or like words of affirmation? Or like get We're going to do active service. I'm bugging. Active okay. So if, you, if you had to dress Amber Rose based on the love language active service, how would you dress her? I would dress her um, in a in a dainty little um, slinky, almost slip like dress, but not not really. But it's a dainty little slinky dress with like spaghetti straps mm -hmm. and a little black leather handbag. And I'd put my hat on her too. And I put her in um, some high heel stilettos, open toe stilettos mm -hmm. because, and I'd make her go walking around downtown, just kind of lost looking around like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> I'm trying to catch a cab, but like we're in living in the age of Ubers. Like do people still, do people still do that? Like, oh my gosh, I'm like mm -hmm. a little lost. And then, then someone's gonna see her. And you know, acts of service, and they're gonna go, Oh my gosh, this beautiful damsel in distress. How can I help you? How can I serve you? How can I give you acts of service? Because you you look like you need you need it. <laughs> the day is hilarious. <laughs> Yes, girl. All okay. right. So that that is it. Amber Rose, we're out there, girl. Yeah. So what does the future hold for Miss Nade? Oh, oh my goodness. So I had I'm almost through with my bachelor's and mm -hmm. um part of our degree is that we have to like do our capstone final project. Um and it's a runway show. Mm -hmm. And um, it's obviously going to be suit based, okay? That because that's the thing we do suits, so right. we suits and things. But um, I want to make this collection. It's going to be an like Art Deco inspired mm -hmm. collection. Mm -hmm. Art Deco meets like modern. So we're bringing the the like old time, but bringing it forward, mm -hmm. to update it a little bit. Um and this collection is going to be the biggest thing that i have done ever 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 it's going to be bigger than new york even though it's going to be like a school mm -hmm. um like, like end of uh your four year that school right. and new york fashion week obviously is is a really big thing to do right. i have grown so much since new york that was a few years ago now and but so this collection is going to be 10 times bigger than that mm -hmm. and my plan is to sell the collection either it will be in stores will be in specialty stores or mm -hmm. just have like um people actually buying it straight from me and um having a whole bunch of like custom orders whatever the case may be but as soon as i'm finished my degree i'm ready to i feel like i have everything under my belt in terms of of course the design of course the technical side of course the artistic side the creative side but also the business side how to run a business how to market mm -hmm. your business it is a business at the end of the day it just mm -hmm. so happens to be a fashion business so then i am going to be ready to be seen in the big lights billboards mm -hmm. in the stores on fashion bomb daily on the red mm -hmm. carpets like yep. i i fashion yeah. bomb daily yes i'm absolutely oh, okay. ready to be featured on fashion bomb daily to have celebrities influencers and all types of people all types of really cool interesting people mm -hmm. wear mm -hmm. my garments like it is time it's coming up that's definitely where i see myself in a, in a few years all right, y'all heard it first. <laughs> so the day of NLM garments has fashionably dated Makara. This is so good to get to know you because last time we was, uh, it was during the pandemic and yeah. 
the pandemic was so flighty for me. Yeah. I had, it was just so much going on. And then I had someone pass and then I, my emotions was just all yeah. over the place. It was just a lot going on. I bet. Yeah, I, I don't know. How are how you are though? Things? How are things going on with you? Oh, things are amazing, girl. Good. I'm, I'm just not on social media, but yeah, things are amazing. I'm, okay, I'm about to be hitting up a whole bunch of different states. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to do a lot of exhibiting different um, conventions. Yeah. So I've been preparing for that. Um, I have to prepare for like fifty thousand inventory for like different vendors I'm mean, well not different vendors but different conferences I'll be doing mm -hmm. for like the entire uh fourth quarter and then my business is in the process of being a women's business um enterprise certificate so I'm in the final stages of that that application is so gruesome okay. they go through your taxes yes. they go through your references like they want to know if you are real legit business right. so I'm in the final pay final phases of that um, I mean, I fired a couple of people, hired a couple of people. <laughs> Child, listen, when you are a woman of color, like some people will definitely try to test you. And yeah, yeah it's integrity and communication is very big for me. Right. And if you, if I keep having to talk to you about it and you are just continuously testing me, yeah, you're out. <laughs> Give me your credentials. Here's your last pay. No, I'm not rehiring you because we've had this talk and I've documented it. So enjoy. Um, and what else? I mean, other than that, girl, I'm soaking in the sun. I'm enjoying. Good. Okay. Good. I'm happy happy to hear that. So, oh yeah. So do you want to share to the people any exciting news where they can find you, where they can shop your clothes? Let them know. Absolutely. You can find me here on Instagram at um, NLM Garments. You can also find my personal page where we, you know, kick it up, have fun on Instagram as well as TikTok. And the handle is uh, The Diva Does Things. You can shop my wide brim fedoras we have here. Yeah online at nadealaura.com but if you go to my instagram page if you go to um nlm garments on instagram the link for the website is right there in the bio mm -hmm. so there's a lot coming up so just keep keep it here i haven't posted in a while but i've got mm -hmm. a lot planned i've got a lot to share with you guys and i'm really excited for the rest of it yes I'll Hope you guys enjoy definitely i would if you're if you're coming at the end or if you're catching me i don't know some of the sign posting i don't know because i'm barely on instagram <laughs> i will be reposting this on my youtube channel because my youtube me you see things and i will be posting other little clips um elsewhere but i also will be posting on um, the audio version on up to podcast form as well and if you want to fashionably date me as a highly skilled garment maker, no offense to t-shirt makers, but I'm just not, that's just not my target audience and I'm not interested. Um, definitely hit the link in the description. And what else is there? You should follow me on TikTok. Um, I don't mess with Instagram. I go where I'm celebrated, not tolerated, and they keep flagging my account. So you can find me on there. You can definitely find me on YouTube. I'm definitely in them YouTube streets, okay? Or you can just find me in real life because I'm out in these streets, okay? Next week, I'll be going back to Philly, okay? Philly, I see you, okay? Yes! Until next time, I got a couple of things to do. So there will no be no show next week. I got to get a root canal. So I got to rest up. Until next time, you will be getting some more amazing designers. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. And y'all make sure y'all go follow her too, okay?